الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم اذ تبرا الذين اتبعوا من الذين اتبعوا وراوا العذاب وتقطعت بهم الاسباب وقال الذين اتبعوا لو ان لنا كره فنتبرا منهم كما تبرؤوا منا كذلك يريهم الله اعمالهم حسرات عليهم وما هم بخارجين من النار يا ايها الناس كلوا مما في الارض حلالا طيبا ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان انه لكم عدو مبين انما يامركم بالسوء والفحشاء وان تقولوا على الله ما لا تعلمون واذا قيل لهم اتبعوا ما انزل الله قالوا بل نتبع ما الفينا عليه اباءنا اولو كان اباؤهم لا يعقلون شيئا ولا يهتدون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اذ تبرا الذين اتبعوا من الذين اتبعوا imagine the time when those who were followed will disown their followers وراوا العذاب and they all will see the punishment وتقطعت بهم الاسباب and the bonds between them will be cut asunder <coughs> so this is about the day of judgment that they will see the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the mushrikeen the mushrikeen the common mushrikeen they followed their leaders they did not have a lot of knowledge they followed their leaders and what whatever their leaders said they did so if their leaders chose to stay with shirk and disobey the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the whole you know qabila will do it they will follow their leaders so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing all of them and saying that these bonds will be broken on the day of judgment and then the people that you are following today they will disown you then what will happen wa qala alladhina tabau law anna lana karratan fa natabarra minhum kama tabarra'u minna and those who followed on the day of judgment they will say we wish we had another chance to return to the world so that we may disown them as they have disowned us kadhalika yurihim allah a'malahum hasarat alayhim thus allah will show them that their deeds were nothing but causes of remorse for them wa ma hum bi kharijin min an nar and they are not to come out of the fire so on the day of judgment when something is decided for them of course they will not be allowed to come back they will not be allowed to exit the hell fire they will not be allowed to come the come to the world again and disown their followers their the people that they were following so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing and warning them that now is the time to do the right thing ya ayyuha an-nasu kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiba o people eat permissible good things out of what lies in the earth wala tattabi'u khutuwat ash-shaytan and do not follow the footsteps of the shaytan innahu lakum adubu mubin indeed he is an open enemy for you so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has here again mentioned one thing uh, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever per- things have been made permissible halal and tayyib by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those things we can eat and the mushrikeen at that time used to let some animals out let them let some animals free and dedicate them to certain people certain people who had passed away and said that these are now sacred animals to slaughter them and to use them to eat their meat is now haram this was the belief of the mushrikeen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that ya ayuhan nas kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiban allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shunning this practice that this leaving some some animal out openly and dedicating it to someone and making it haram upon you that's not permissible allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal halal basically means it has come from hul hul means 
Allah some a knot that is opened, a knot that is untied. So when something is halal, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares something halal, <coughs> it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens a knot upon that thing, that now this thing is consumable for Muslims. Tayyib is something that is pure and that is agreeable with the tabiat. But of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that some people confuse us that okay something is tayyab and something is halal maybe maybe they are two different things something cannot become tayyab until they, that is halal so if something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not opened the knot of halal upon that thing it cannot become tayyab in the definition of something being tayyab it being halal and permissible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is included shaitan do not follow in the footsteps of shaitan innahu lakum aduwwun mubin definitely he is an open enemy for you your your open enemy innama ya'murukum bis-su'i wal-fahsha wa an taqulu 'ala Allah ma la ta'lamun indeed acha he orders you only to do evil and immodest acts so su is general ma'siyah su is general disobedience and fahsha is acts of immodesty wa an taqulu 'ala Allah ma la ta'lamun and that you ascribe to Allah what you do not know. So this is this was what the mushrikeen were doing, that they would say or you know associate things with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that they had no idea what what they were and what what was their reality. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَمِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ When it is said to them, follow what Allah has sent down. قَالُوا They say, بَلْ Instead. نَتَّبِعُوا مَا أَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا Instead, we will follow that religion on which we have found our fathers. أَوَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاؤُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَهْتَدُونَ Is it so, even though that their fathers had no understanding at all, nor had they been on the right path? One clarification about this ayah that Muthi Shafir Rahimahullah has written is that this ayah some people ignorant people use it to tell us that to follow the ayma mujtahideen of the ummah the ulama of the ummah even that is a sin because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is himself saying that when we ask people to follow what Allah has sent down and from, from that they take the meaning of the Quran ittabi'u ma anzal Allah they say bal nattabi'u ma alfayna alayhi aba'ana we will follow what we have found our forefathers on so they try to apply this ayah to the people who follow the ayam mujtahideen for example the people who are hanbali shafi'i maliki or um, hanafi and the last part of the ayah awalaw kana aba allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying then that are you like those animals who who just follow the call and do not have their own wisdom and that you are going to follow your aba your forefathers even though they had no aql and they were not on the right path so it should be understood that Alhamdulillah the Ayyama Mujtahideen had a lot of Aqal and they were on the right path. For a thousand years, more than a thousand years, the whole Ummah agreed that those were the wise, wisest in Deen and those were on the right path. So this ayah does not apply to them. Similarly, when we follow an uh, Imam, we actually follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Ittabi'u ma anzal Allah is through following the Imam, is through, is through the doing as the Imam has said. Otherwise, this ayah refers to the mushrikeen who are doing against the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are doing against the Quran. To follow an Imam, to follow a aima, one of the aima mushtahideen, is to follow the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, in this day and age, for most people, it is impossible to truly follow the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without gaining the understanding of that from a alim, from an, a mujtahid and imam. Now, can we all become mujtahid? Can we all become aima? That's a detailed discussion. Hypothetically speaking, there can be a mujtahid in this time. Hypothetically speaking, there can be a alim of that wisdom and understanding of an imam. But that's very rare. That's very rare. And that requires a lot of struggle. If you look at the life history of the Aima, they had 
so much knowledge they had dedicated so much of their time in learning the deen and not only learning the words of the deen but the practice of the deen imam abu hanifa was a tabi'i he had learned the deen from sahaba similarly other aima were very close to the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they had learned the words and the practice of deen from the tabi'in so we can yes hypothetically spend a lot of time understanding deen but to develop that kind of taqwa first of all to develop that kind of knowledge is a really hard time, hard task too second to develop that kind of taqwa that kind of spiritual elevation and to be that close to the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to actually see the people who learned to actually see the practice of deen in the lives of the people who had directly gained the deen from sahaba is is impossible for us so that is why it is recommended even the biggest ulama even the biggest ulama of this time who are on the right path consider it an honor for themselves to follow imam abu hanifa or to follow imam malik or to follow one of these aima for the for these reasons may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the right understanding of deen alhamdulillah rabbil alamin salatu wassalamu ala sayyidil mursalin ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم انا نسالك الخداع والتقى والعفاف والغنى رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين صلى الله تعالى على خير